Christians are listening. The lost are looking. Important study. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to show you the difference between saved and lost people. When you're saved, you understand that the reality is actually spiritual. The Really what's going on is uh, things that are spiritual. When you're lost, you look at things on this world. Things of this world, I'll say it that way. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 through 25 it says here in the King James Bible, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Is there some uh, uh, groaning and travailing right now and pain? Yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world. And not only they, the lost world, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. That's what we're waiting for as a Christian. We are groaning and just saying, oh, you know, I'm just so, so sick and tired of this world. I'm tired of my struggles with sin. I'm just tired. Lord, could you please come back? Even so, Lord, you know, come quickly, you know. That's a Christian. And we're looking forward to the redemption of our body. Verse 24, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Um. The Bible says we're to live by faith as a Christian. Um, faith is not the things that you can see. We have hope in Jesus Christ coming and taking us out of here. That's how a Christian lives. We are listening. We'll get more into that. I'm going to prove it from Scripture. Verse 25, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. We have patience waiting for the resurrection, the redemption of our body. Ephesians chapter 1 talks about that. You can see other studies that I've done on that. Lost people don't think that way. Lost people have no hope. Luke chapter 21. Let me show you now what lost people are doing. Luke chapter 21. Turn there in your King James Bible. <clears throat> Luke 21 verse 20 through 27. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. When you what? See? Hmm. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. If you're a post-tribber, that's what you're looking for. What are you doing in Jerusalem, by the way, and in Judea? Oh, the, the, it's for the time, the, the great tribulation is to purify the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, what's the church of Jesus Christ doing in Jerusalem and Judea? Hmm. No, it's actually the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble. The Jews that uh, reject Jesus Christ, that hate re Jesus Christ right now, um, it's to punish them. It's not for the church. Verse 23, But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. This people. Who's that? The Jews. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Yeah, God's going to make a full end of all the nations. Then he comes back and he restores Israel and rules and reigns for a thousand years from Jerusalem. post tribbers just don't get it. Verse 25, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. Uh, what does it say in 1 Corinthians chapter 1? The Jews require a sign. What are Christians doing looking at signs? Looking at... Christians listen. We don't look. Hmm. Look at this. Verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Hmm. You see, the lost are looking at a lot of things that are going on in this world right now. The pandemic and all these other bad things and war on the horizon and economic collapse and everything else. And you can see that stuff as a Christian and it's distressing and whatever else. But uh, 
as a Christian, you, you look at that and you say, okay, that's not my future in terms of I'm going to go into this time of Jacob's trouble and whatever else and that and to purify the church. You, you should be looking at this stuff as a Christian and saying, there's bad stuff coming. It should be any time now. We're going to hear the Lord call our, our name and we're going to go up. Let me show you the scriptures on that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. If you're new to this and you don't understand things, there's a, a lot of devils out there, a lot of very lost, wicked, hell-bound sinners that uh, hate the idea of the resurrection. And they hate the idea of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and, and finishing your salvation. And um, they, they believe in some kind of future time where you have to suffer special things and whatever else. And they're not suffering right now, but you will be in the future and all this. Yeah, they're lost. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Lost people have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You read Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, and Luke 21, talking about the second coming and the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, there's not one mention of dead saints coming up ever okay understand the differences between the catching up of the body of christ and the jews that go into the time of jacob's trouble and see the second coming of jesus see the resurrection is we the dead rise first we which are alive and remain caught up together with them in the clouds we'll read that here in just a minute that's the resurrection the second coming is see we go up to jesus the resurrection the body of christ goes up <clears throat> But the second coming, Jesus Christ comes down. You got to get the difference there. Uh, verse 14. Oh, excuse me, verse uh, 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay? Very important to get the distinction there. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And here's where it gets very interesting. Uh, Romans chapter 8 talks about we with patience wait for it. Verse 25. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting to see the Antichrist? We're waiting to see the mark of the beast system and whatever else. No, we can see that stuff on the very near horizon, but we're not waiting for that. Okay, it's not sight. We're living by faith. We're waiting for something. Revelation chapter four, verse one. Revelation 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. He hears. And he said, Well, he looked up and he saw a door. Uh, yeah, but I don't think anybody else is going to see that door. Say, brethren, yeah, I think you will. But uh, that's not what we're looking for. We're listening. You see, that's our hope. He hears a voice, as it were, a trumpet talking with him. Huh. The trump of God? The trump of God appears only two times in your King James Bible. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 51 through 58 in that area. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Only twice. The new versions say trumpet. Trumpet's not the right word. It's the trump of God. Okay. The trump is the sound that the trumpet makes. The voice of the trumpet. Okay. That's very important. Because you see, when Christ comes back at the second coming, the seventh trumpet, or whatever they say about, well, you see the angel blows a trumpet and whatever else. It's not an angel blowing the trumpet. Okay, It's the trump of God. Understand that. It's the voice of the Lord that calls the body of Christ home. Not an angel blowing a trumpet. So again, these false uh, prophet post-tribbers, They'll come out and they'll say, well, see, it's the, 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 the trumpet of God there. They'll even change it sometimes. I've heard them do that. Or the trump of God if they go with the text. And they'll say, well, that's the, the seventh angel blows the trumpet. That's when we go up. So it's not the whole way through the tribulation. It's just partway kind of 
they're lying to you. It's not what the Bible teaches. It's the trump of God, not an angel blowing a trumpet. Two different things there, unless you believe that an angel is God. <clears throat> that one of the angels, you know, the one that blows the seventh trumpet is, is somehow God blowing it or something. Quite confused. But let's go to John chapter 10, and I'll show you the proof. John chapter 10. There's a whole lot of confusion out there, and it's being done on purpose. Satan is the one who's bringing the confusion, and his ministers, anybody that preaches a post-trib rapture, the Christians go into the time of Jacob's trouble coming up, the, the events of the book of Revelation are all about the body of Christ going through this time and whatever. Anybody preaches it, they're lost. You say, can you say it? They're, they're preaching it, they're lost. Post-tribbers are lost, every single one of them. Okay, if you're newly saved and you've just, you know, you're confused about the issue, well, I'll have some grace for you. But you get some guy that's preaching or in ministry or whatever, and he's saying the body of Christ goes into the time, they're lost. I can say it without any reservation of, well, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Or, no, no, they're lost. They're lost. Been kneeling with them for years. I know that they're lost. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. Went to the wrong passage. John chapter 10, verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, um, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. What did John see? He saw a door open in heaven. And what did he hear? A voice talking to him as of a trump, a trumpet talking to him, the voice of the trumpet. Look at verse 3. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. That's what we're listening for, brethren. We're not looking for anything. We're listening for Jesus Christ to call your name if you're saved and lead you out. Can't wait. Verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Now, can you please show me anywhere in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, the second coming passages? Can you show me anywhere where they said, I don't understand? They didn't say that. The Jews that were there that Jesus Christ was speaking to, his disciples, they didn't say, I don't understand the second coming stuff, because it was all it's in the Old Testament as well. Jesus Christ is, is declaring a mystery here in John chapter 10. And they're saying, I don't get it. That's why Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, he writes, Behold, I show you a mystery. He's revealing a mystery that was first revealed by Jesus Christ. Again, you'll get the thing of post-tribbers, they'll say, well, the, the second coming stuff in Mark, Matthew 24, primarily they'll go to Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, Mark chapter 17, Mark chapter 21. That's, that's, it's all the same as the rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15. And it's all the same. It's just that you know, it's, they filled in the details later on about the dead coming up and whatever. That's not true because Jesus Christ spoke about the resurrection of the body of Christ, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. He's speaking about it right here in John chapter 10. And the disciples are saying, I don't get it. I don't understand when they didn't say that about the second coming passages. Things that are different are not the same. Okay? <laughs> Verse 7, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. John sees the door open. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. You know, if you're genuinely saved, you aren't going to be able to listen to a false prophet for very long. Just something there and you'll say, I don't know, something, something about that guy. Just, ugh, ugh, ugh. You won't follow him. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man shall enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Again, we go into heaven. We're up there. For a lot of the other things, you can watch the glorious future of the Bride of Christ study to hear about all the things we have to look forward to. And then we come out, we come back down to the earth to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Okay, got to get, got to understand that. Verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
okay? And I did a sermon many, many years ago, back in, I think, 2009, called Post-Trib Rapture Thieves. And I got into the thing of this verse right here. The thief cometh not but for to steal. They will steal promises that God made to Israel. They'll steal passages that God made to Israel. And to kill, they will kill your joy. They'll kill your testimony. They'll, they'll you know, it's just, it's disgusting what they'll do. And to destroy, they will destroy your rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Because you aren't looking for Jesus anymore. You're not going to serve Jesus anymore. You're going to be a prepper or whatever. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth, scattereth the sheep. Very interesting. A lot of these uh, hireling pastors with their little 501c3 incorporated church buildings are now fleeing. The wolf comes along and says, coronavirus. Nobody's out, allowed out on the streets. And they're saying, we got to close our churches because the government told us to. Where's that at in the book of Acts? The government says the, the rulers, the political rulers come out and say, uh, you're not allowed to worship. You're not allowed to go out and preach in this name. And the believers say, well, okay, the government said so. I guess we can't. No, it's not there. And yet you get these hirelings today and they do just that. They're there. They're, they're bold. They're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble and, and everything else. And, you know, we're going to refuse the mark. But the government told us to not go to church right now. So we have to listen. <laughs> That's a problem. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Hmm. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek. We're all one in Christ Jesus. One fold. You get it? Um, right now, there's a lot of people that are living in fear. Uh, they're living in fear about a virus that if you actually got it, you could easily cure with uh, nutritional health. <laughs> yeah, if you're in good nutrition, you have a good strong immune system, you won't even get it. You know, But uh, there's so many natural cures out there for flu and pneumonia and whatever else. So people are dying. You know, they're in bad shape or in bad health. I mean, Americans are some of the most toxic people out there. I mean, just eating stuff that's banned in other countries, you know, hydrogenated oils and, and things like that. It just, you can get into all that stuff, the high fructose corn syrup and all the food additives, additives, excitotoxins and everything else. People that are living on that stuff, they have almost no immune system. And then they go and they, they get sick from whatever else and they die. Okay. That's, that doesn't mean the rest of us that are healthy should be quarantined. Okay. That's stupid. It's nonsense. But that's the world that we're living in right now. And uh, as a Christian, I can look at this stuff and I can say, okay, I don't have to think to myself, oh boy, the Antichrist is coming. Oh, what am I going to do? And whatever. I can look at this and I can say, how about today, Lord? And I can listen for him to call my voice or call my name. Excuse me. I can listen for his voice. Looking forward to it. So uh, if you're living in a spirit of fear, you're being brought into bondage by the devil and his, his minions out there. I recommend you repent of that. So just want to do a quick little study on this, uh, the thing there that uh, we're, we're not looking for the Antichrist to show up. We're not looking for the New World Order or the Mark of the Beast. We see that stuff coming? Yeah, sure. You can see it being formed right before your eyes and you say, oh boy. I can't wait to hear my voice called and Lord say, time to go home. Um, and if you're wicked enough out there to, to, to make fun of that, uh, you deserve what's coming to you. You're going to hell and you deserve it. Uh, you wicked post-tribbers out there that make fun of it and, and say it's being beamed up by Scotty or some other kind of thing. You deserve what you're going to get. Okay? Don't let anybody shake your faith in Jesus Christ coming. Don't listen to the hirelings out there that uh, 
are big and bold and, and brave and they're they're going to fight the new world order and everything else and the government says do this and they go oh, yes sir you know they're hirelings so that is going to be it thank you very much for watching